Hi, my name is Xavier Perry Art. I'm an artist. I'm here with the Desire Company. And today, I'm here to show you how to make your own coffee table. All right, today you will need particle board, you will need a Sharpie, you need a mask or sawing mask for protection, you need goggles, you need a jigsaw blade, you need a jigsaw, and you need legs and hardware to assemble your table. Now that you have all the materials that you need for assembling your table, the first step you have to do is draw out your design. So for our popcorn coffee table, what you wanna do is use your Sharpie marker so then that way you can have really clean, crisp, and opaque lines. You want to make sure that you're confident in your mark making. If you need to take some time and kind of draw a little bit slower than others, that's perfectly fine. Just be sure to draw something that you like. So for instance, in the top of your popcorn bucket where you have your popcorn on your table, make sure that you get some nice curly, swirly, organic lines because popcorn is fun. It's really curly. There are some tight areas, but for the most part, the popcorn is the fun part, so have fun. And for the buckets, you wanna make sure that your lines are really crisp and you want to use a ruler to get really straight and sharp edges. As you can see, I started cutting out our shape, which is a popcorn bucket. The bottom of the bucket is a slight curve, but it's really close to doing a straight line, which I'll be doing another straight line in a minute when we get to the side of the bucket. But I want you to pay close attention to down below where you see your popcorn that has fallen to the bottom of the bucket starts to take some tighter curves. <clears throat> On the longer curves or the straight lines, feel free to pick up the speed a little bit and cut through the board. But as you get closer to some more curvy designs, you wanna slow down and take your time a little bit and you want to control the speed on your jigsaw, which I can show you. So on the handle, you'll see you'll have a plus sign and a negative sign. And if you wanna slow down, all you have to do is roll upwards. And if you wanna pick up the speed, then you can roll it downwards. And I'm also controlling the speed with the trigger. The harder you press, the faster the blade goes. The more you release, the slower the blade goes. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna come up to the top of the popcorn. And one technique when you're cutting these smaller shapes out, you want to start your curve here. And then as you can see, I have the top of the popcorn that needs to come down on the curve. But instead of cutting upwards and turning the blade here, what I'm doing is coming in at two different angles. So I'll start in and go in from, from one angle. And then I'll start from the other side. As you can see, I started my cut up high to come down into the area where we don't need the waste part of the board that's gonna be trash. You wanna come down and then you want to meet your angle point here. And then once you get the curve of the side of the shape that you do want, then you start from this angle and then you work into the new point, which would be here. So I'll cut up words and I'll show you how that looks. What I did was I started at my new curve that I created with my second point. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a third point on the curve that I do want to keep going up with the blade to the next point. And then I'm going to start somewhere in the waist area, the area that I'm going to cut away. I want to start inside that area and work my way to the line that I do want to keep, which is the side of our bucket, and then work my way straight down instead of bringing the blade in and trying to turn at such a tight angle. I'm making two entry points. So first entry point will be the top of the shape. The second entry point will be in the waist area and working your way into your design and then going down to the second entry point. Now to show you how that looks, you have your popcorn shape that is now out of the waist area and now into the design. You can see where I started up high on the side of the bucket and I worked my way into the design from the waist area that we're going to uh, throw away. And then I worked my way down to the point that I need in order to complete the curve of the shape. Now you can see 
our popcorn, the bottom of the bucket here, the popcorn itself, and the side of the bucket is completely free. And we can apply the same technique as we go up the bucket, around the curve of the bucket, and start to work our way through the popcorn shape themselves. All right, now I'm all done cutting out my shape. If you need more time cutting out your shape, please hit the pause button, take as much time as you need, and we'll keep going. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna move on to sanding the table. So you want to get your palm sander. Make sure you have a good grit at the bottom. I'm using an 80 grit. Um, it won't be extremely smooth, but it will be smooth to the touch. And if you rub against it with your fingers or the brush up against it with your arm, it won't scratch you or be too rough to your skin. So one cool tip to know while sanding, <clears throat> it's nice if you start at the top and just kind of work the top of the edge. And then what you want to do is go down to the side and work the side of the table. And then on the corner, you wanna lay your sander flat on the corner. So you have the top, then you wanna go down the side, and then you wanna angle it on the corner. You're angling it on the corner to make sure that it rolls off instead of ending at a point. Top, side, and then the corner. Move down the corner. And then if you lay it flat, you can roll off the corner and you can also roll your wrist in a rotation motion and that'll ensure that you get a, a nice smooth curve instead of a jagged edge. My paper is kind of wearing down as you can see. I have some holes in my paper here. So I can either tear it in half with the Diablo sandpaper and flip the edge and now I have a new point or I can remove the whole strip. In this case, I'm gonna remove the whole strip just because I have more than just the edges that are wearing out. Some of my middle of the sandpaper is wearing out. So I'm gonna replace it and put a whole new one on there. As you can see, it's Velcro, so it's easily removable. You just take it off and put a new one on. So let's get a new one. Fresh strip. You wanna align the holes of the sandpaper with the holes on the palm sander. These holes here are actually vents. They're supposed to suck it up. If it's kind of off a little bit, it's okay. Uh, it's just Velcro, you can lift it up and, and realign it. Awesome, got a new piece of paper on. Now we're ready to start again. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and assemble our legs and put this table together. What you're gonna need is your Roby drill bits. You're gonna need your Hillman metal screws. You will also need your Sharpie. You will need your hairpin legs. And you will need your Roby drill. All right, the first step is figuring out where our legs go as far as the placement. We're going to apply them to our table and then we're going to use our Sharpie to kind of mark off where we want the legs to be applied. So then that way we can then remove the legs and drill in our placements. So you want to start off by strategically placing them on the table where the weight will mostly be bearing. So that's somewhere where the table has a thicker surface and not on the edge like one of our popcorn pieces that are hanging off. You wanna put them about an inch or an inch and a half away from the very end. So then that way they're not oddly hanging off the table either. And just kinda of make sure that they're in a good position to where they're gonna support the weight. So by our table being a custom design, it's not a perfect square. They won't exactly be in an even position all the way around. 
just make sure they're about an inch to an inch and a half away from the edge and they're in a position where they're not on a corner piece hanging off it's actually going to support the weight so that looks good now i'm going to take my sharpie and i'm going to stick it through the holes where the hillman screws will be placed in order to dot where i want to pilot my hose you can take it down once you make your mark so they don't fall over on you move on to the next one all right so now i'm going to sit my legs off to the side for just a moment i'm going to grab my roby drill bits and now we're going to pilot some holes so with your drill if you hold the back end and twist the front end of the rotating part you have your lock and unlock in order to exchange your bits I'm gonna stick that in there as far as it can go and then you will twist it in the opposite direction to relock it there we go so now you want to find your sharpie hole and create a nice hole. And what we want to do is kind of create placement. What you don't want to do, in my opinion, is push all the way through because you don't want to come through the front of your design. That's very important. Your drill bit is going to be longer than your particle board because your particle board is only slightly wider than an inch and a half so you don't want to take your drill bit which is about two inches and a half and go straight through your design so you just want to get the hole started work your way around and we're just starting the hole kind of sort of piloting a start position. Now I'm going to unlock the head of my drill again to exchange the bit for the Phillip head. <clears throat> and we're gonna grab our Hillman Phillip head screws, which are a half an inch, this is very important not to buy your screws longer than a half an inch because it will once again go through the front of your design and that's what we don't want to happen you want to grab your leg place it over your piloted pose with one hand kind of hold your leg down and hold your Phillip screw down and then you want to drill it right in. So as you can see, we have one screw in. And we're going to just work our way around the first leg. Since we are using a drill, be sure not to over tighten. Perfect. Now we have a leg in. Now let's do that technique all the way around. Now say for instance, for some reason, if you lose your drill bit or if you have the wrong size and it's gonna make your hole too wide for the screws that you have or some freak accident. I'll continue doing it this way just to show you an example of how it looks. Now we just want to make sure that uh, that aligns. We're going to grab our hand hairpin leg and they line up perfectly. Each leg takes about five screws. So keep that in mind. So now that we have our legs assembled, if we turn it over, you can see that our design is nice and sturdy. We're going to take a look at the front. So feel free to continue applying your legs on there. I'm glad you tuned in. I can't wait to see how yours turned out. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.